Are you an ambitious fitness entrepreneur looking to build a fitness business that can run without you? Then tune into today's episode because you will definitely have a few aha moments when guest Pete Pirano joins us on the Fitness Business Podcast. For all of the latest updates on upcoming episodes and guest information, follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn. Feeling inspired by one of our episodes, or maybe it was a guest, please head to iTunes and leave us a review. We want to hear from you. We love hearing from our loyal FBP family. Hey, it's me, Dory Nugent. I am the host of the Fitness Business Podcast, and I want to thank you for spending the next 30 minutes with me. On today's episode, industry expert Pete Pirano, who is the founder of Empirepreneur, teaches us how to create the financial and the time freedom fitness entrepreneurs seek. Our episode will start in less than two minutes. First, a few words from our sponsor, ISSA. Health club leaders, you work hard to ensure your members have the very best fitness experience, right? You need personal trainers who do the same. Become a preferred partner with ISSA and we'll deliver the best trainers in the industry to your club in a matter of days, fully certified and ready to work. And we'll help you keep those trainers by offering them exclusive discounted pricing on ISSA certifications. Because when your trainers stay, so do your valued members. Becoming a preferred partner with ISSA is absolutely free. Click above or visit ISSAonline.com slash FitBiz to get trainers now. I'm telling you, it is a great group over at ISSA, so please make sure you check them out at www.issaonline.com. Get your pen ready now for Keep Me's FitBizpiration. What are your top three tips to build a fitness business that runs without you? Uh, Number one, you got to change your point of view about your business. You got to think about your business as the product. Think of it, you know, as you're building your own franchise prototype, if you will. And when you can start to look at your business differently that way, um, then you start working on it, as they say, not so much in it. So I'd, I'd say, you know, point of view is everything. Number two, I'd say is focus on winning the people game. At the end of the day, you know, our people are our business. They are our product, especially if you're in the personal training, you know, world. And I think, again, people don't emphasize that side of things enough. Um, And if you can really master that and you can master developing your teams, building great teams, um, then you actually have the opportunity to build a business that works a lot. Because if you don't master that piece, um, there's zero chances of that happening. And lastly, build a systems dependent business, not a people dependent business. Um, this was actually for me the the biggest aha moment that that changed my business, changed my life is when, you know, I really thought in those terms um, as opposed to being, you know, you'd never want to be dependent on any key person or key people because that's really really risky. And so that was uh, probably one of the biggest aha moments, as as I like to say, that uh, I had that really changed everything for me and, and put me where I'm at today. Make sure you come back next week as my teammate, Jason Stolwell, takes center stage as he presents his show, Thinking Ahead, with guest Don Doyle. Don is the VP of Health Plex. And after my interview, Jason will introduce you to Don and give you a sneak peek of their interview. So make sure you stay tuned after today's show. MyZone has pioneered unique wearables with talking point technology that makes the difference. Reach more members of your community and keep them engaged for longer through motivation and gamification wherever they choose to work out. In the gym, at home, or outdoors, we're stronger together. Get in the zone at myzone.org. Let's transition into this week's interview with Pete Peranio. Welcome to another episode of the Fitness Business Podcast. You guys are going to love today's episode. We have Pete Peranio here. He is the founder and the president of Empirepreneur. Pete, welcome to the Fitness Business Podcast. Oh, thanks for having me. I love this podcast. I've listened to uh, many of the episodes on here, so 
You guys are doing great. Thank you so much. We appreciate that. And your topic today is going to resonate with a lot of our listeners out there, out there, and that is how to build a fitness business that runs without you. I mean, that sounds pretty enticing. Yes, yeah, that's the challenge, right? I think it's the dream. Everybody gets into business because they they seek freedom, but often, you know, once we get into it, uh, that that uh, freedom chase is harder than we think sometimes. So we mm-hmm. hope to help people today do that. Yeah, I love your tagline. I saw on your website that says you help create the financial and time freedom fitness entrepreneurs seek. Yeah, hundred percent. I mean, I know for myself. I mean, just that was. One of the big motivators, obviously, besides helping clients, but it's, you know, improving things for our family. And I think, you know, it's that's what everybody, like I said, chases for sure. But it's it's harder said than done. So (laughs) for sure, definitely is. So speaking of time freedom, I'd love to just have you answer this question. What is your stairway to freedom for personal training business owners? Yeah, so it's our it's our process that we have for our fitness business operating system. So it's a five step process that we take our clients through into to to create that freedom that we were just talking about. Um, it, it's broken down into five steps. It's the capital step, people, systems, transformational growth, and scaling. Problem with most people is that they really struggle or they get stuck, you know, attempting to either tackle all these stages at once or in the wrong order, or sometimes they get just stuck at that capital stage only. There's other people that sometimes are doing fine with revenues or doing pretty, pretty good with revenues, like a personal training student, maybe they're doing 30 or 40,000, but they can never really break through to that coveted seven figure number. And that's often because of the lack of people and systems. Sometimes they think it's a marketing problem, but it's actually the people and systems problem. Um, in the transformational growth phase, then we're focused on adding fuel to the fire after we've gotten control of the business. That's the what we call that people and systems phase is uh, getting control of the business. So in the transformational growth phase, we're adding more marketing systems. We also focus on leadership growth because this becomes the other ceiling that people hit is building leadership teams. They often, you know, leading leaders is an entirely different skill set, and that becomes that next ceiling. So we have to help them not only add new marketing for growth, but be able to build that leadership team. And then that scaling phase is really where now they have the freedom to pick their path and we help them with franchising. I, I spent 15 years in franchising, licensing or acquisitions. So really, truly scaling. A lot of times use that people use that word scaling, but they're really just talking about growing their business. We're talking about really, truly scaling at that phase. Not everybody necessarily moves in that, into that phase. Some might be perfectly happy at that once they've created that freedom. But at that scaling phase, you know, that gives the real ambitious entrepreneurs we work with truly that ability to scale. You like to say where fitness entrepreneurs build businesses that work. And most successful businesses that work have mistakes. They make mistakes along the way. So what are the biggest mistakes you see personal training business owners make that prevent them from acquiring clients and even growing sales? Yeah, I think it really comes down to three things that I see most often. Number one is their pricing strategies is really killing them and really keeping them stuck in that capital stage that I mentioned. They don't have a duplicatable sales process that allows them to sell higher ticket programs. They be, And what I mean by duplicatable is that everybody in their teams can do it. They don't become the bottleneck and the only person that can sell in their business or the only one that they trust to sell. And then finally is the lead generation piece of it, of course, having a good lead generation system. The common mistakes here are just not creating a unique positioning. So they've really commoditized themselves in the market. And they also do what I call dabbler marketing and and 3% marketing. So you just said there when listing your three, your top three, the first one was price. Let's go with that. What would you say are the biggest mistakes personal trainers make pricing their services and how this not only hurts your sales, but client results and retention? Yeah. So, I I mean, this really kind of breaks down in two areas here. It's really, first of all, is this the pricing strategy mistake. And that's typically, you know, starting with low ticket, you know, versus high ticket. So a lot of times, you know, you're 21 day this or challenge that, or 
the $199 membership or $300 membership. And the challenge of that, especially if you're starting there, is it's a long runway to scale up your cash flows. It's very capital intensive, especially when you start. Um, it takes a lot of memberships and smaller ticket to get to a reasonable revenue uh, number. It slows your ability to outmarket your competition. It slows your ability to scale up your team because of cash flow issues. It's high maintenance and manpower intensive. It's very inefficient because they tend to be more churn and burn as well. And retention is usually not as good. So those are really kind of the strategic mistakes from a pricing standpoint. But number two, I think is mindset and belief. A lot of people are scared or feel guilty about charging what they're worth from a pricing perspective. And they don't value their expertise enough. They often impose their own financial position on their clients who often are, could be 30 or 40 years you know, ahead of them. So there's a lot of kind of mindset belief issues in terms of really getting their pricing right. And, and if you don't get that right, everything else is harder. I mean, it's just, you know, you're, you're on that cash chasing hamster wheel and the numbers never seem to work. You never seem to have enough in your bank. So it's just critical to get that fixed. Couldn't agree with you more on those two. And I feel like when we get questions or our FBP family out there asks us to bring people on about pricing and sales and things like that, there's always this battle on what do I price my worth at? And And I agree also with believing in themselves because once they get the answer, sometimes they're like, oh, I don't know if I can do that. They doubt themselves. Yeah, maybe this will help. I mean, it helps the client. So you kind of ask that as part of the question is, if you're, if you're premium pricing and, and high ticket pricing, you can typically have a client for a longer term. They're training more often, which means they're going to get better results if they're only signing up for a short term program or if they're going to do the 21 day this or that. They're already coming in with a shorter kind of commitment level. Right. So when somebody makes a financial investment, whether we like it or not, we make that investment. We're more committed. And so you're getting a more committed client. And, you know, also it's more reassuring. So kind of an example I like to use is, you know, if, if I was, you know, getting wrongfully charged with a crime, right. And I had to get in an attorney, um, there's an attorney that charges $50 an hour. And then there's one $300 an hour. Which one are you going to pick? You're going to definitely pick the $50 an hour. What? No way. I'm going 300, right? Because the 50, you're like, what's wrong with this guy? <laughs> right? well, I was like, hey, you see it as a bargain. Everybody wants yeah. that bargain, right? They think I don't want to, I don't want to bargain if I'm going to prison. <laughs> Right. I want to be reassured that you're the best. And that's that's kind of my point is that it actually reassures people. People make pricing, you know, or they pick sometimes experts and authorities like personal trainers. I mean, you know, pricing can influence that decision. Yeah. So so I can tell you the bargain hard though. That's good. <laughs> CP family next week, the podcast is going to be broadcast live from the federal prison. Because I, <laughs> I paid for the $50 party. Uh, that should be interesting. <laughs> That's my middle name. There we go. <laughs> All right, let's get back on track. I'm going to throw out three letters, everybody. Well, I say you either love this or hate this and that's kpis right key performance indicators you either absolutely love them your numbers junkie or you're like oh not them again but what do you feel is the one kpi that 99 of personal training business owners don't talk about that actually could double their sales without having to add a ton more of clients yeah, it's, it's definitely client frequency. I really don't hear people talk about client frequency enough. And what I mean by that is how often is a client training every single week? And so I've looked at data of over 400 locations and actually the, the average is about 1.5 to 1.7 times a week is how often a client trains, right? Now, a lot of times you might ask a studio owner and they'll say three, right? But the reality is once they look at the numbers and I've seen this with clients, then they're they're not, uh, they're not happy <laughs> about it. Right. And so we help our clients get to three and four times a week. And so if you do some simple math on this, I mean, think, you know, let's keep it easy. hundred, we got a hundred clients and they're at one and a half times a week. That's 150 sessions a week, 600 sessions per month that you're training. Right. Now, if we can make that three, 
right? Because we know how we really focus on that. We know that number. Now we're talking about 300 sessions a week, 1,200 a month. You've doubled your business without any new marketing widget, new trick about sales or acquisition, just by knowing how to increase your client frequency, have a good client fulfillment system that can manage that, keep that frequency high. So it's just a number that's really killing a lot of personal training students, particularly and just personal training businesses in general, because they don't, they don't focus on, they only focus on how many leads maybe I'm getting and what's my cash sale number. Okay. So mental note out there to everybody listening, add client frequency to your KPIs and, and track that. Amen. Before we end today, I would like to just ask you just plain and simple. Why do most fitness businesses, like, why don't they work? I think it really comes down to, I mean, the ownership, right? So a lot of times the, to be cliche, but they're, you hear it a lot, but it's very true. They're working in the business, not on it. Right. And so now the hard part is, is like, okay, great, Pete. I've heard that before, but how do I actually work on that business? And, and I would say, I mean, definitely the system side of things is where you're going to duplicate yourself. So I don't see enough focus on systems. You got to go beyond marketing. I mean, marketing is important. Don't get me wrong. I get it. <laughs> like that's why it's the first stage for us, capital stage in our business. But you really, if you look at the rest of our steps that we talked about earlier, you got to learn to go beyond marketing. You got to look at people's systems. And I don't think in the least in the fitness industry, there's enough focus on that. And so, especially at the tr personal training studio model, they're literally stuck in the trenches working with clients and there's just not enough time in the day to do what you need to do to run a good business. Yeah, I had a guest on a few weeks ago and he made a really good point. I was I kind of I asked him as far as, you know, what mistakes has he made along the way? And it was I loved his answer because he's like, here's the biggest mistake I made and I almost lost my business. He said, I was I'm he goes, I think I'm a pretty good leader. He said, you know, mm -hmm. I'm good at customer service. I, mean, I can lead my team. But he said what my mistake was was I didn't teach my team the same skills that I had. So when he walked away from his business, he said it, it would it would fall apart. And he said it was my fault because he said I was so in the trenches and, you know, mm. doing everything myself, being a good leader, good uh, skill set when it comes to customer service. But he goes, I forgot to train the rest of my staff, those same exact skill sets. And he said, then when I walked away, he said, it, it just, it just, he goes, I almost lost my business. So it's really interesting that you say that. Yeah. I mean, one way I like, I tell people to kind of envision it, right. You look at the typical org charts and I always tell people like, okay, when, when you start fill in the boxes that, you know, there's marketing, there's sales, there's this, fill in the boxes that you occupy. Usually when they start, they occupy them all. Right. Mm -hmm. And so then the process is literally in how I envisioned it when I started was I got to re start re removing myself from that org chart, from those boxes. And so you start to implement the systems of what you're doing and get somebody to replace you eventually. And you have to, you know, that's a systematic way. I, I envision myself kind of backing myself out of the business and moving up that board chart. So um, no, I couldn't agree with uh, your guests more on that. Yeah. So Pete, you know, I just, I really want to thank you for coming on today's show. Love to just take 30 seconds and have you tell all of our FBP family out there, like Empirepreneur, what do you have going on for 2022? Who? That's a big year for us because we really, you know, during COVID and everything, we decided that besides, obviously, we're, we're happy to report that literally we didn't have any clients closed. We, in fact, they grew. So our clients grew. So besides making sure that things were good for our clients there, um, we really just spent time on, on our FBOS uh, program and just bolstered that up. And so this year for us, though, is kind of go time and we want to let people know about us so we can really help them out and help them take their business to the next level. All right. Well, hopefully all of our listeners out there take the minute to go to our show notes, click on your website link, click on your social media links. They can follow along, see what you're all about and get to know you and your business at, on a better level. Yeah, absolutely. I will love to talk to you for sure. Yes, we will have all your contact information out there so that, that if anybody has any further questions, they can reach out to you. But thank you. Thank you so much for taking time out of your day to come on and just share your experience and your expert advice with all of our family out there.
Thank you everyone for joining me today. And a big thank you to Pete Peranio for representing the industry today. More questions for Pete? Hey, head on over to www.fitnessbusinesspodcast.com for Pete's contact information located in our show notes. You can also subscribe to the show notes so they are delivered right to your inbox. And then you will never have to Google our show notes again. I think that sounds like a great idea, don't you? Coming up next, Jason Stolwell will introduce you to his guest for next week's episode. G'day, it's JT here. And I was talking to Blair McKaney, the CEO of one of our sponsors, MX Metrics, the other day. And I gave him a hard time about his company's tagline, defeating mediocrity. By definition, that means he's excluding the majority of the market. But Blair just wouldn't budge. He only wants to work with operators who want to punch mediocrity in the face, really smash it. So I've talked to a few of his customers, like Joe Shirelli from Gainesville Health and Fitness, And yeah, it's for real. While Joe is a nice guy, he isn't satisfied with mediocrity either. He's crushing it as well. So I'm still dubious about selling only to operators who want to defeat mediocrity. But if this resonates with you, I reckon you should check them out. Go to mxmetrics.com. But remember, only if you're interested in smashing mediocrity. The Fitness Business Podcast has landed a milestone. As a team, we have successfully hit 1 million downloads. Everyone on the team is super excited and our guests have joined in on the fun congratulating the Fitness Business Podcast. Let's have a listen. Congratulations, Fitness Business Podcast, on hitting 1 million downloads. That is such a great accomplishment. This is Nick Parker, episode 340, and it's honor and a privilege to be a part of this celebration. Quick Fire 5, sponsored by Hapana. Welcome, Don Doyle, Senior Vice President of HealthFlex Associates. Don Doyle is a seasoned veteran of the health and wellness industry. He has been involved in club operations for over 20 years and is responsible for implementing many successful growth and development strategies in that time. Don has been a featured speaker at URSA, Club Industry, and the Medical Fitness Association's annual conference. Don, welcome to the Quick Fire Five. Thank you, Jason. Thanks for having me. We are excited to have you with us. So let's just start right now with question number one. What is a life lesson you learned during the pandemic? Well, what we what I've learned is the importance of socialization. I think it was something I took for granted in my field, you know, being in front of people and, you know, judging their commitment to you and your commitment to them is a face-to-face thing. And when we were hampered by the pandemic and had to close our fitness centers, um, we rolled out a lot of strategies of virtual training and being at home. And I think it was great for our members that they could still see our instructors and our team in front of them. But that lack of socialization, I think we all saw that, you know, with terrible suicide increases and rates of increase and just people missing the socialization from families, the work environment to our industry, which is, you know, medical wellness and fitness. And it's something I won't take for granted again is not being able to be with um, some special people in my life, my family, and and then the members of our facilities and, you know, getting to know them and getting to be able to you know, support their efforts is a challenge when you're not in front of them and don't have that face-to-face contact. Yeah, incredible answer. So number two, if you could play a character in any movie, what character would it be? Oh, boy, this was an easy one for me. It would be Gene Hackman and Hoosiers. I have a, uh, a love for basketball and a love for old basketball when people shared the ball and you know that, that team instead of an individual. And I forced my um, children to watch Hoosiers maybe you know, once a year. Um, I think there's a lot of life lessons from the movie itself. And uh, you know, Gene Hackman able to play that role of you know the, the coach of that team and the importance of the whole team concept and not just the one player kind of thing stuck with me. Absolutely. Number three, please complete this statement. Sunday mornings, you can find me. You can find me at um, church and then going to a coffee shop with my wife and 
in this time of year, sitting outside and enjoying the uh, the environment of you know outside, sitting on a patio, or we bring the coffee back to our deck and you know sit there. But you can find me with my wife. That's for darn sure. <laughs> Number four, do you have a book recommendation for our listeners? A book recommendation. My my favorite book of all time is Boys in the Boat. Not sure if you're familiar with that, but it is a um, a story in the 1930s with a back then the rowing. I don't even think it was called crew then. Was you know one of the main sports. It's like the 21st century of you know football and basketball and baseball. And the the book talks about a freshman team from the University of Washington that came in and was real real competitive and um, ended up representing the United States in the Olympics and the story of the, the 1936 Olympics in Germany, but the, the story that team meshing and bonding and taking the individual personalities. And as we know, you know, rowing is so dependent on everybody in that boat and to see how the coach meshed each individual to a team and with the different backgrounds and, and growing into you know, an Olympic caliber team as freshmen from the University of Washington. It's really cool book. Great recommendation and, and unique. We've not had that one. So, um, all right, final question. Uh, give us a 20 second elevator pitch on why listeners should tune in next week to hear our episode. To hear our episode. Well, Jason and I have many opportunities to talk about fitness and we're passionate. And if nothing else, we're very calculated on running our business with numbers. We are, um, We've had many opportunities to discuss some metrics and benchmarks from our industry, and we know number-wise what a successful fitness facility looks like. Thank you, Don. FBP family, make sure you tune in next week as we learn more from Don in regards to addressing the ever-evolving challenges we face both to our mission and to our margins. Jason always provides amazing content. So please come on back next week to hear his interview with special guest, Don Doyle. Oh, and don't forget, you can make life easier on you by subscribing to the show. Head to www.fitnessbusinesspodcast.com. It's that easy. My goodness, we have a lot of people to thank. First off, thank you to our founding partner, Active Management. Our partners, Keep Me, MyZone, Discover Strength, ISSA, and Hapana. Our advertisers, we want to thank them as well, Rex Roundtables, MX Metrics, and VaporFresh. We believe what you leave behind is not what's engraved in stone monuments, but woven into the lives of others. Mm-hmm.